fatty liver disease has two origins. I mean, the ultimate with the ultimate problem being it just has too much fat. Now that sounds more benign than it is because having a fatty liver is just one small step away from it starting to get inflamed um, and then scarred. And it, it really is the gateway problem to further much more catastrophic liver problems. So we want to catch it at the fatty liver state because we can still turn it around and we can turn it around quickly. Now, where does the fat come from? There are two sources for that fat. One source is insulin resistant fat cells where the fat cells that are upstream from the viscera, as they start leaking their fat in a state of high insulin, um, then it, it, the liver will readily pull that in and store it. So that's one source. Um, and in that case, if allulose can improve by activating AMPK, the insulin sensitivity of the fat cell, then that fat won't be leaking out of the fat cell in a state of high insulin. It's okay for a fat cell to leak fat in a state of low insulin because then the liver will just burn it. But if the liver is seeing a lot of fat and insulin is elevated, it cannot burn it. Fat burning will be stopped. Fat oxidation, it will have to store it. It turns it into triglycerides, and now we have fatty liver disease. Um, but then second, we come back to fructose because the other most common form of the liver accumulating fat or the most common mechanism is it is it uh, making its own fat, uh, this process called lipogenesis. In fructose, I'll never forget a manuscript I read probably 20 years ago that described fructose, one of its many ways of describing it, as the most lipogenic molecule in the body. So the liver will so readily take that fructose and turn it into fat very, very easily. And so that becomes a direct contributor where if, some, where if someone's eating fructose-heavy sweeteners or sugar um, or in any other form of it, then that fructose is directly contributing to turning into fat within the liver. But if that fructose-rich um, sugar has been replaced with a rare sugar like allulose, then you are no longer getting it. And rather than um, having the, the building block for fat, in contrast, you're activating AMPK in the liver, which will promote fat oxidation or the burning of the fat. So then you begin literally resolving the problem rather than contributing to it. We know that you know type 2 diabetes or just insulin resistance is the leading risk factor for heart disease. So any intervention you're you're embracing that is improving those aspects of metabolic health is reducing um, cardiovascular risk. People would want to listen to what you just said, that insulin resistance is really the leading contributor to heart disease. And f how many years have we been saying, oh no, your cholesterol level is oh, elevated. I know. I know. So in, in fact, David, that, did you see the paper that was just published? Was it uh, uh, maybe New England Journal of Medicine? where they looked at the five leading risk factors of heart disease contribution and LDL was the absolute lowest of all of them. And having a history of type two diabetes was not only the highest, but nothing else was even close. Right. It was multiples higher than every other risk factor. There's no question that the current view of metabolic health, which is a glucose centric paradigm, all with the understanding of eat a lot of carbs and eat them often. It is a wonderful way to sell medications. Yeah. And it works for everybody. Everybody gets a hand in the yep. uh, in the fructose sweetened pie. My lab's published work, uh, which is building on the work of many other much more prominent um, dementia, Alzheimer's focused scientists than I am. I'm a mitochondria guy, but it was in there that we made our contribution, where we found that um, uh, one that the d the brain with dementia has a perfectly preserved, at the level of its genetic expression, ability to use ketones for a fuel. Whereas almost every gene involved in glucose metabolism was significantly compromised in brains in the hippocampus, the memory and learning center of people with Alzheimer's disease. So there's a direct ability of the ketone to fuel the brain.